Activa and Azure on a daily basis. I'm also highly passionate about the bot framework and the and the AI in general. And you can follow me on Twitter and I blog regularly on these topics as well. <clears throat> so what is the goal of this session? So I don't I don't believe in agenda. I only believe in goal. So you will be able to create a chat bot right after this session. That's the goal. That's the promise. Let's see how far we fare and we'll go for it. So let's think about the traditional customer service. Right, so what are the pain points we have with the traditional customer service? So here are the pain points. We all know this. So there are resource limitations. Not everybody can be trained because of attrition and all those related uh, you know, overheads and they're not efficient, not available all the time. We know they are only available through certain channels, which is always a challenge. So these are some of the some of the pain points that anyone would have experienced dealing with the traditional customer service, right? So when we ask people around what is the next generation customer service should look like, right? So these are some of the things that you might have known yourself after talking to one of the customer care representative. So you might say, the customer service desk must know the customer very well, and that is available anytime, available anywhere, and that is consistent. How many, how many of us would have heard different answers from different customer care representatives, right? So it has to be consistent, and that is fast and instant. We don't, we don't, we don't like to be on hold and get the answer and all those things. We just all fast paced for simple questions. We don't have to be on hold. That's not right. And we also want it to be highly intelligent. We also want them to be highly intelligent, right? Because we want them to kind of consistently train the resources and keep them always lined up for serving the customers. So they have to be highly intelligent to, to handle some of the queries. These are typically the, uh, the responses you get from a customer perspective. If you ask what is the characteristics of the next generation customer service. But if you ask a CXO, he will say, I want everything that you listed above, but I want to have the price. How is it even possible? How, how the economics, it doesn't just work out, right? So how can it be possible? So we have something called Azure Bot Framework, okay? So this typically checks all these boxes, whatever I just showed you in the previous slide. It has all these other fancy features to support the bot framework, to put out a very highly powerful bot. It's definitely possible. It, you can do whatever you want. It's very powerful, highly flexible to actually uh, put out a bot. But you have to understand some of the some of the challenges there. As much as, as I love to work on the bot framework, there are some challenges I need to caution you about. So the number one, you require a pro developer to put out a bot if you are going with the bot framework approach. Okay, and then it's it's it, it it takes a lot of time to build. It's costly. That's the truth. That's the ground reality, and it takes longer time to market because of the above points, right? And even after you go deploy it, and if your customers are using it actively, if you want to change something, you again have to recruit that same developer or a new developer, train him, and then modify some of the basic pieces to answer the uh, answer the new question the customers may ask, right? And your team has to have a very deep understanding of the Azure services. So these are the these are the points I need to caution you about before you go into the bot framework approach. Yes, the bot framework is very powerful, beautiful framework to put out a beautiful bot, but it may not be for everyone, not for all the scenarios. When it's really a hard sell for any organization, uh, you know, as bot typically is in the high priority for their business cases, it's always perceived as a nice to have still, right? So how can you give a taste of bot to both the organization and also uh, the customers in a way that is not time consuming and money gobbling, right? Not a lot of organizations have resources spare for which they don't even know how their customers are going to respond, right? What if there is an easier way to create a bot without dealing with the intricacies of the bot framework, right? So I'd like to introduce you to the power virtual agents. So what is this first of all, right? So during the course of this conference and these events, you would have heard Power Platform multiple times, I bet. 
So Power Platform is a low code platform or no code platform to create the apps, business apps. So what is this Power Virtual Agents doing here? It is actually a low code service to create chatbots in the context of the Power Platform, in the context of your business applications, right? So it is a family member of the Power Platform. That's all it is. It works hand in hand with the other family members for you to be able to create those nice bots to work with your customers. That's all it is. Right? So in order to understand what this Power Virtual Agents, wanna, we need to understand the core functionality of this Power Virtual Agent, which is nothing but topics. What is this topic? Imagine all the scenarios your customers are going to reach out to your help desk, right? They may reach out to you for knowing the store hours. They may reach out to you for paying the bill or they might have a query on your bill, so they might have to reach out to you to understand the bill a bit, bit better. They might want to check out the gift card balance or redeeming a gift card, whatever, right? So all these scenarios, whatever your customers will reach out to your help desk, those are called topics in the Power Virtual Agents um, scenarios, right? So all these are top. We need to create topic for each and every scenario that you think your customer is going to reach out to the help desk. Right, fair enough. No, this is what topic contains. It's nothing but a dialogue. It's, not, it's nothing but a conversation that the bot is going to have with your customer. Your customer is going to have a query. They are going to trigger a particular topic. Let's say they are saying that, hey, I want to know the store hours in Calgary or something like that. So a topic will get triggered and the bot would provide some suggestions as to which store they're talking about. And then the user might respond saying, this is a store I want, it to, I want to know the store hours for. And then the bot is going to respond the customer and the end of conversation. So this is a dialogue. This is a conversation that your bot is having with your customer. This is a topic. Likewise, you might have topic for all these other scenarios that your customers are interested in reaching out to your help desk. OK, so. You may wonder like the customers typically ask questions where the bot has to find the information from the back end database, right? Let's say your customer wants to create a case. They have a problem with the recent purchase they made and the bot typically has to go to your back end database in order to create that case so that somebody can take a look at that, take a look at it and then respond back to the user, right? Or the user, your customer may have a query as to where the particular case is and what is the status of the case. The bot again has to go to your back end to find the case status in order to respond back. So bot typically needs to have those connections to all these databases, but now, how can a bot do all these things when I say this Power Virtual Agents is just a low code or no code platform? Because we all know that accessing the database is not an easy thing to do or accessing any system or tools or services for that matter is not an easy thing to do. Like you need to write code. There is no denying that, right? So how are you going to do that? So this is where the bot is going to rely on its big brother, Power Automate. So Power Automate, if you do not know what this is, this is nothing but a service, again, a low code service that's going to have connections to almost say 300 connectors. I kind of stopped counting the number of connectors this guy has. So it has connections to all these tools and services without writing any code, or you might be writing a probably a line or two. Right, and that's all. So Power Automate helps you to connect to all these backend systems, tools and services in order to you know, store the data back or get the results back and give it back to the user. So Power Automate is heavily leveraged by these bots. Almost there could not be any scenarios where you don't leverage the Power Automate, right? Unless until it's more like a quick question and answer bot, which doesn't care about the backend system, right? So think about a, think about a backend system. Most probably you, you're going to have a native connector out of the box. You don't have to write any code for it. All you have to do is just just see that and add it to your power automate and call it today. Okay. So let's see the let's see a demo. Let's see a demo. How are we going to create a create a topic, create a chatbot and and let's see how we can serve the customer here. Okay. So let's all right. 
So if you're wondering, this is how the Power, Auto, Power Virtual Agents homepage looks like. It's a very useful homepage. If you look at it, what exactly you can get started with, and it also gives you some uh, interesting videos to learn about the product more, some of the features and so on, and also community support, and you can also share your own ideas and so on. That's also available, so this is good. So now let's see how we can create, how we can actually, what are, what are, what are the topics, right? I, I just briefly talked about the topics. Let's see some of the out of the box topics that we get from Power Virtual Agent. So these are some of the lesson one, lesson two. These are some of the topics that Power Virtual Agent actually provides us. Whenever we provision a new Power Virtual Agent, if you go here and then sign in, you'll automatically see all these things basically. Right. So these are for us to be uh, understanding what exactly is a topic, how exactly we can create a simple topic. Right. So if I go to the authoring canvas, every topic has an authoring canvas. This is where you author a particular topic, how a bot should respond to a particular customer's trigger. So we have here, these are the these are called the trigger phrases. As as this imply, these are the these are the phrases your customer uses in order to trigger this particular topic. If your customer uses one of these, it doesn't have to be exactly the same sentence here. It can be it can be slightly different. The the Power Virtual Agents framework itself has a has a native uh, language parsing capability in order to understand what is the intent of the user when they use slightly tangential trigger phrases like this. And then you have a message here. So this is a quick. This is a user's icon and this is the bot icon as you can see here. And then the bot can say I'm happy to help the store hours, help with the store hours, and then it also provides the messaging as to what exactly it has to respond to the customer. So if you see here, this particular topic does not have any connection to the Power Automate. It doesn't connect to any backend systems. It's a very simple topic. And then end of conversation, right? So let's see the other topic. Let's see slightly advanced topic. So again, go to the authoring canvas. Similar trigger phrases. So in this case, bot is saying, I'll be glad to help find a store near you. And then there is a question the bot is asking now, which location are you interested in? And it's a multiple choice. Basically, the bot is providing the user with some choices here so that the user knows what exactly the bot is uh, looking for, right? So it actually project, it actually provides some suggestive actions, Redmond, Seattle, and Kirkland. And now it stores the response in a variable. And then based on what the user chose here, it's asking some other messages and finally ending the conversation, All right? It's a it's a very interactive UI based authoring tool, right? So before I go into any other topics, slightly advanced topics again kind of goes the the curve kind of curve kind of goes upwards there. Uh, so we have something called system topics. So these are system topics. You cannot create a system topics. You can only create your own user topic. OK, so the system topics are something you get for free whenever you provision a new bot with the power of virtual agents. So think of these as more like a reusable um, topics, right? End of conversation. What should a bot do when the conversation is coming to an end? It can ask a question like, did this resolve your question? And then based on the user says yes or no, it can actually trigger other topics. So the topics are reusable as well. You can trigger a particular topic from the other topic as well. So let's let's see this greeting. Uh, this is interesting here, right? So if a customer says good afternoon or good morning or something like that, this is what the bot actually says. This will get triggered. Let's see this in action. Let's see how it behaves. So we have a we have a quick uh, you know testing tool here available within the Power Virtual Agents itself to test your topics. So I am a customer and I am going to say hello. So it actually triggered all these things and it gave me the right response back. Right, so this is what the topic is all about. Let's why don't we actually create a create a topic ourselves to create a case. Probably let's say I'm a customer and I have a product. I have an issue with a product that I recently purchased and I'm going to report this problem to the service desk, right? So let me be that. Let me take this persona and see how we can create a topping out of it. So before that, I'd like to quickly show you around. So I created a quick little power app like this, like a five minutes power app. Uh, honestly, I just put out a like a new entity called case entity, and this case entity has a few fields. Uh, 
OK, this is really not manifesting to few fields, but I'll show you here. So these case entities are few fields here. So there's one case number, product, issue description. That's all. So case number will be auto generated whenever we create a case. So all we are going to do is we are going to see how to create a case, how to create a problem back in the Power Apps from the Power Virtual Agent bot. OK, so let's see how we can create a how we can create a topic to handle this particular scenario, right? So let's click on this new topic. Let's say um, create a case. And what are the trigger phrases that I would like to use? Uh, that I guess the customers could use. Let's say I want to report an issue, maybe this one, and then I can also say I'm just randomly saying something. It just doesn't, you know, I'm just guessing at this point what the customers could use to reach out to this particular topic or reach out to the help desk, right? So report a problem. Could you create a case for me? OK, the more trigger phrases you use, typically the 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 more the accuracy is going to be in order to trigger this particular topic, right? So I'm just going to say go to authoring canvas. Now this is where I'm going to author how this topic should flow, how the conversation should actually flow, right? Let's begin. Now, when a customer uses one of these, what I want to do is I want to I wanted to ask a question back to the I want the bot to ask a question back to the customer saying thanks for reaching out. Which product the issue is related to? So I'm going to leave this as multiple choice options. I'm going to give some options to the customer. I'm going to say laptop. The next one could be. Monitor. The last one say keyboard. These are different products I have now. See this it automatically the power virtual agent automatically created some different. Um, you know some paths here when the customer chooses this. What should happen when the customer chooses this monitor? What should happen and so on? So I also want to store whatever the customer chose in a variable. I'll show you why why I choose to put it in a variable shortly, but for now just think that basically whatever the customer chooses to go with, I'll just fill it up in my variable call product. Now, if a customer chooses a laptop, my next question would be. Sure. What is the problem? Right? This is what I wanted. I wanted my bot to ask. Right? So here in this case, it's not a multiple choice options. I'm not be, I, I won't be able to provide any options for the for the customer to, to choose here. I wanted the entire user's response here, right? I want to capture entire problem statement from the customer, right? So I'm just using this and again, I'm going to capture this saying problem, say description or something. Or let's say description just to keep it simple. All right, so far so good. So we have this. We have the trigger. The bot is asking a question and bot also provides some suggestive actions. And then you're storing it in the product uh, variable. This is the product where the issue is actually related to. And then we have different branches, different paths to take for each of these user's choices. But you know what? I kind of want to ask the same question, even if the user chooses monitor or the keyboard, because I want to ask the same question. So how do we do it? Watch this. So I can actually drag this and drop this here. Isn't it cool? So you can actually do this. Now the bot is asked what is going to ask the same question regardless of what product the user chose. Right. Finally, this is where I expect the user to provide the response, the actual problem statement, which I'm storing it here. Now the bot is going to actually show a message saying. Thanks, let me create a case for you. Please hold. Now. The next thing what we want to do is this is where we are going to reach out to our backend system in order to be able to store this particular information, the product description, all in my case, right? I want to fill this up. I want to create this new record. That's all, right? So I'm going to call an action. This is nothing but the Power Automate I just talked about. Okay, the Power Automate is going to actually do the hard, the, the heavy lifting for us. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a new flow. Just don't get confused with the naming convention here. Just the power automate. So 
it is going to take me to a new page here. It's going to allow me to create the necessary Power Automate steps in order to create that case back in the Power Apps. So all I have to do is I have to provide two inputs, right? So one for the product. Let's say this is just product, whatever. Yeah. The next one is the description, right? These are the two parameters we are gathering from the customer, right? So the Power Virtual Agent is going to feed these two parameters to my Power Automate. That's all it is. Now what I want to do is the meat of this Power Automate is going to be adding an action, and then I'm going to choose a connector. These are the different connectors I talked about. It just, if I just uh, empty this one out, these are the number of connectors you have. All these are provided out of the box. You don't have to do any coding in order to connect to one of these connectors. Just, just that just beautiful, right? So just you have these many connectors available for you to work with. Now, I'm going to use one of these connectors in order to talk to Power Apps. This is the connector we typically use to connect to the Power Apps to create a record, read a record, whatever, whatever you want to do with the Power Apps, right? So in this case, I'm going to choose an action called create a new record because that's exactly what I want to do to create a new case record back in the Power Apps. OK, so the entity name, as you would have guessed, the entity name is called the cases. Yeah, this is the entity name. So I'm going to use the same one here. I'm going to type in case. It shows up. Let's pick this one. So it automatically knows that it requires product to be filled, issue description to be filled and so on. So I'm going to give the name because name is mandatory. I'm going to say case created with with the bot. Now the case number is going to be automatically filled in. I'm, I'm not going to be worried about this, but I need to be filling in this description that is coming from my power virtual agents. How do we know? We explicitly mentioned the 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 parameters here. So description and then here goes the product. That's all. I don't have to do anything else. Now finally returning the value back to the power virtual agent. So I am choosing to return the case number back to the customer. As soon as I create a case, I want to be able to provide this back to the customer so that if in case customer wants to check the status of the case, they can do so in the future. OK, so I'm going to say case status. So not case status, case number. And this is where I'm going to say it automatically the, the power virtual agent automatically populates all the fields that I can use in order to respond back to the customer because it knows that it works with the context of this entity. So this is all automatic. I did not do anything to pull this one up to show all these fields back from my power apps in the back end. I am choosing to go with the case number because I want the customer to be able to see the case number as soon as they create this case um, in the in the back end. OK, that's all I got. So. I'm going to rename this to a meaningful name so that we can refer this back in the Power Virtual Agent. Give me a second. In a case. All right, so let's go back to our Power Virtual Agent. So what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to call an action. And I expect this to show up a newly created Power Automate right now, which is here. Create a case. This is what we created. And now what we are going to do, we created two input parameters in the Power Automate. Remember? So we are going to choose the product here and then description here. These, this is the reason I gathered these information as part of the variables. OK, so I'm just filling in right now and then it automatically has the intelligence to know that case number is coming back as an output from the Power Automate. OK, so all I have to do right now is show a message to the customer saying. Um, here is your case reference number, so whatever, right? So just to show this to the user and I'm going to populate this case reference number. All right, we've created our first topic with our bot. Let's save it. Let's test it out. track between the topics. You can't save because you're not working on the latest bot content. Refresh content.
good. I still have everything here. OK, all right. So finally, I also want to end the conversation, right? I can end the conversation. I can or I can also actually go to another topic as well. I can say goodbye directly here or escalate to a human agent, whatever, right? I can actually trigger another topic directly from here as well. But for now, I'm going to end the conversation with the survey, right? So let's say. I want to create a case. I want to report a problem, maybe. So we expect this particular topic to be triggered automatically. It doesn't doesn't matter whether uh, it, this might give you a wrong implication that I was here, so it's triggering this. No, this will trigger this particular statement would have triggered this particular topic, regardless of whatever topic I'm in, right? So now it shows three different options for me to choose. I'm choosing laptop. Say the display broke uh, during the shipping. I need replacement. So the next thing it's going to do is it's going to actually go to the. Yeah, it's super fast that it actually entered everything. So if you notice it, it connects to the power automate. It's saying thanks. Let me create a case for you and then it connected to the power automate. It created a new case. See this case number is auto generated for me and then it actually asked me to this resolve your question and I'm saying yes. Now it's going to show that survey that I talked about. Done. So that's pretty much it, right? So we created a topic here, right? As simple as that. So we just dragged and dropped a few things and then used the power automate in order to connect to the backend and finished it off. Let's see a quick. You should be able to follow this through when I create a. If I create a new, um, new topic for let's say get the status of the case. Let's stream this through because I. Assume at this point in time you are able to follow me. So this one you should be able to uh, guess what I'm going to do ahead of the scene. So what is the status of the case, right? One question could be like this, or let's say I would like to know. Some of some, whatever you can think of, right? You can always fine tune later. This is where I talked about you don't need a developer to come back and do that. You can actually do that whenever you want. Let's see. Let's say your customer typically asks a particular type of questions in order to get into it. You can just keep adding it and training it. it should be fine. Status of the case. Hey, Dina. Yes. Uh, is it possible for you to zoom a little? Uh, there has been a request on the chat to zoom in a little. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, is it good now? OK, cool. Yeah, so the this way the question is going to be. I want to ask a question. Can I get the case number? Because this is what is going to be used in the back end to find out the status of the case, right? So I also want to show you the case that actually we got created. So here is the case that got created through the power automate when we engage the bot to do that, right? So I should see my previous problem statement here as well. The display broke during the shipment and replacement and the product name is laptop. So let's say that somebody is working on it and they made it in progress. OK, so. Now if I go back to the power virtual agent and then can I get the case number in this case, I'm going to get the entire user response. Uh, I'm going to store it in the say case number variable. Right. And then now what I'm going to do show a message to the customer saying. Let me look it up. Please wait. And then call an action. The action it's again a power automate. I've already created just to respect the time here and then get the case status as the power automate, which actually takes this case number as the input and then it's going to get back the case status that we we just saw somebody updated us in progress. Right, so it takes input as a case number and then it outputs the case status. That's all this power automate does. It's a very, very, very simple power automate that we put together here. Finally, show a message. Here we go. The case status is. Finally, let's say end with a survey. Why not? Save. Let's test this guy. I want to know the case status. OK, can I get the case number? That's good. So I'm going to type. Here is the case number. 
boom, you have the answer here. It's in progress. Right, so that's pretty much it. So you're able to create a bot and the bot is able to handle multiple scenarios. You know, you can immediately your mind can wander across all these different scenarios back and forth question to the users. Now it can go. It can get really, really complex as well, but not in the context of a development, but in the context of you have to manage all these conversations, right? So if you go back to the topics and let's look at the lesson three here. So this lesson three, if you go to authoring canvas, by items. These are the different trigger phrases for this topic to be triggered. And then these are some of the questions the bot can ask and suggestions the bot can provide and different routes the bot can take based on the user's response and bot can ask other questions based on their previous answers and finally connect to the back end and get the job done. Right? It can get really complex. It can. It is very powerful. This entire power virtual agent is actually built on the bot framework itself, so it is very powerful. So only thing is it just your imagination limit as to what you could do with this one. That's all right. So obviously any bots it's actually useless without the analytics. You need to understand what are the resolution. Uh, what are the what are the resolution rate? How many topics are really getting resolved properly? What are the escalation rate? And what is the abandon rate? What the bot is abandoning the, the topic for some reason because maybe the bot is not able to answer it. Even though it triggered a right topic for some reason it's failing. And what is the overall customer satisfaction rate, right? All these things can be obtained without doing any changes. This is a lot of the box, and obviously you can't customize this. But then we, they, it's already, it already has some KPIs to measure your bot performance for sure, right? And remember, this is actually updated one hour ago, so this takes an hour to update. So keep in mind. But then you have some interesting standard industry standard KPIs for you to be able to work with the bots uh, performance itself and how do you publish it? So when you when you go into this particular, um, you actually want your bot to be where your customers are, right? Let's say all your customers are in Facebook Messenger. You want to be able to deploy your bot in the Messenger. Let's say your customers are all like teams because it's all internal employee related, uh, you know, bots helping your internal IT service desk. So maybe you want it in the teams or maybe you want it in the telegram or something like that. Right, so or you wanted to embed directly in your custom website as well. Could be any website that you can embed. Right? It doesn't have to be Microsoft's web, like proprietary site or anything like that. It can embed in any website possible. Right, so these are the different channels available for you to uh, work with and deploy the bots to, so that it can answer your queries. Basically, be where the customer, your customer is. That's the whole idea of these channels. Different channels it allows automatically to be you know published. Let's take a look at this demo website. Let's see how it looks like just to get the look and feel. So let's say uh, welcome to the service desk. I can take any questions about creating the case or status of the case. Yeah, whatever you can. You just have to provide some good greeting welcome message and also tell them tell your customers what your bot is capable of doing. And you can provide some sample um, starters so that your customers know what to do. Create a case, something like this. And then here's the um, sample website. The Power Virtual Agent framework allows us to try your bot out. If you're sharing with your organization, you say your managers or other teammates, they could actually go to this link and see how your bot behaves. All right? Here is a bot embedded, and this way, it's the same way you're going to embed in your custom website as well. So you can ask, hello. Can I, I want to create a case. So it's going to take you. Oh, interesting. Anyways, OK, you get the idea. But. Oh yeah, we did not publish. That's the problem. So we have to probably go here and click a button called publish for you to be able to, you know, publish it for the external folks to to, to access your bot. OK, so that's pretty much it with respect to the, the demo that I planned here, right? So now if we go back to my presentation again. So we saw some of the basic functionalities, right? There are more powerful functionalities. Again, it doesn't mean that all these functionalities require you to be a developer. Most of these functionalities are either out of the box or you could pull it off just by dragging and dropping a few things and putting out a bot, right? That's the whole purpose of this power virtual agents, right? So any there are scenarios where you might want to extend it. To a next level 
you might want to engage your IT admins or developers to do that, but the scenarios are very narrow, very specific. So most of the scenarios that you are thinking about can be performed without writing code or very less code. Okay, these are some of the other features that the Power Agile supports today. And what's what's coming? So this year it's announced already that multiple language support is coming. This is one of the long standing requests from the community itself. Right now it only supports English, but then it's going to be supporting multiple language this year and then multiple users can author topics. Right now if I log in, right, I cannot I cannot allow anybody else to come and author the other topic with the same bot, but you know, practically speaking, your teams could be dispersed, right? Your teams, so one team may be responsible for managing all the service desk, service desk related topics. The other team could be responsible to manage all the shipping related questions, right? Related topics. So it is practical to let multiple users in in a single bar to author the topics. This is coming again. And then you can also right now you cannot add images and videos to the topic, but you can in the future. Very, very, very near future and then export and import the bots. So this is again useful in the context of an admin administrator. You might want to export the entire bot that you made and then put it in the test environment so that your testers can test it without impacting stepping on the toe of the developers or sorry, I shouldn't say developers. I should say bot makers in the whoever is whoever is doing it in the you know the making maker portal. Right, so export and importing the capability is coming again, and then finally you can also embed the bot in the canvas app itself, right? So again, these are easier ways that uh, that is going to be enabled in the near future. Now, this is something near and dear to my heart. This is very, very, very important. So when the internet took off, if you notice it, there was no authentication. It was a simple page, right? There was no single sign-on. There is no navigations or validations and all those things, but over the period of time, we learned what it means to be a website. We, 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 we know what customers need. How can we provide a consistent experience for the customers, right? So honestly speaking, the chatbots are in its infancy, right? We need to be able to share the best practices among our team members in order to help out the other teams and learn from each other, right? The customers really may not understand how to interact with the bots and we need to be, you know, we need to ensure that we provide them with the necessary transition in order for them to use the bots effectively. Right. Let's review some of the top best practices and like this is something is going to be a make or break your bot practices, right? Let's see. First one, the bot is saying I'm a bot. Good morning, right? Now, if you notice it here, the bot is not providing information as to what its capabilities are. The customer next question is going to be, I'm not sure what you can help me with, right? Because the, the customer doesn't know. The customer cannot expect the bot will do everything. We are not trying to build a competitor for Alexa, like Alexa or Siri or Google uh, Assistant or something like we are trying to solve a narrow business problem here, right? So the bot did not expect this answer from the, did not expect this question from the user. The, the bot pretty much expected the user to know what it is to do with, right? But the user asked a question back to the bot, right? So the user doesn't know. The user is just getting, starting to get frustrated here because the bot cannot help um, help them out, right? The bot is not expecting this question back from the user at all. So the user, that that's all. You are driving away the user. That's pretty much what you're doing by doing this. So the instead, you could always do something like this. I'm a bot, and I can do this, this, and this. I can I can help you with the pizza order or final status of the existing order. As simple as this, is not very hard to do at all. It's very, very, very simple to follow some of these best, best practices. So now the user knows what to, what to do. So he wants to submit a new order. And then the bot goes, yeah, I can do that for you, done. This is how it should have ended. Rather, the user actually went very frustrated uh, for a very simple use case. The next one could be like this. What pizza size would you like? See, the, the pay attention to this. This is a very open-ended question, right? If the bot asks an open-ended question, chances are there the bot is going to be asked an open-ended question back, right? So yeah, give me a 15 inch pizza. Like I don't know about, I don't know about this. Do this for me, right? The bot religiously goes and tries to save this 15 inch pizza request to the database. Obviously database gets pissed off at this point in time. And then the bot actually says something went wrong. Please try again. So you know what the user goes, okay, let's do a favor to the bot here. Let's do 40 inch. Bot cannot take this request as well. There is nothing called 40 inch in this world. So 
we cannot take this request for you, but the bot doesn't know how to behave this because this, this did not expect the 40 inch or 50 inch from the user at all. So again, you're driving away the, the customer here. So imagine what if your bot does this suggestive actions? You know you could only do 10, 12, 14. So why not show that up to the user? Right? As simple as that. Now the user picks a particular option. You are look look at this one. You're narrowing down the user. You are actually kind of giving a transition path for the user, for the customer to be able to pick what you want them to pick. That's all it is, right? So the bot goes, yeah, sure, we can do that. Done. It should have ended like that. Now, let's take the other scenario here. So the bot gathered the order details. It's going to be a say a 12 inch pizza or whatever. Now it's asking for the credit card details and the user goes, yeah, take my credit card details, give me that pizza, right? So now there is a there is an inactivity period because we all know that going to the financial backend or any sort of transactional systems is going to take a while. It's not going to be an easy, there you go and finish it off and you know within a second or something like that. It may, it may pass, it may take a minute or so even, right? So the, the user doesn't know that, the, how the customers will know it. The customers will never know that, right? We are expected to provide that information back to the customer, right? So instead it should have been like this. I've gathered the order details and provide the credit cards, right? Credit card details and the user goes, provides it. Now the bot says, please allow a few seconds and I'll be with you. This is all it takes. You don't have to be a developer to do this. This is a very simple, straightforward sentence to, to help the customer out, right? Now the customer knows what to do. Basically set the expectation the right way. That's all, right? So let's, let's say the final one. The bot got the order, pizza order from the, from the customer and said bye. Right, so now the customer doesn't know what to expect next as a next step. So when it'll be ready, is there any order number to follow up? Right, so the bot did not expect this answer from the customer. The bot probably expected, oh wow, thank you so much for helping me out or something like that. But then the customer asked a question back because they were not sure what to do at this point. That's all, you're driving away the customer. So instead it should have ended like this. Allow 25 minutes, provide the order number back so the customer knows what to do, what to expect. Finish it off. Simple, right? So these are some of the takeaways, right? You don't need to be a bot framework expert to do all these things, right? You don't have to be. You can leverage, definitely leverage some of the low code tools available, no code tool available in order to do all these things, power automate and so on, and definitely do that. Understand the limitations. It's not perfect. I'm not saying this is going to be perfect. It is not perfect. So it actually was introduced in 2019, but for the rate at which this particular thing evolved in a year, it's outstanding. The number of features they keep adding on this one, it's outstanding, but still there are going to be some limitations because you always have to take a balance of no code at the same time, give a lot of power back to the organizations who wants to deploy the power virtual agents, right? So understand the limitations of what power virtual agents can do and cannot do and play to its strength. You can, you have a lot of strengths to play with here. Follow the best practices. This is the this is the key thing. This is the last statement, but it's not a it's not very important statement. Your bot doesn't doesn't have to be a technical marvel. It doesn't have to be a smooth, super smart agent or something like that. It shouldn't have to create like crack jokes or anything. Like, but if you miss some of the best practices, then you are driving away your customer. So take a note. Follow the best practices, and you should be good. That's pretty much it, right? I can take any questions you may have at this point. Yeah, I think so. We have one question from Jay, uh, and the question is, uh, can we populate the options from CDS when we are showing the options to the user in the bot? Great question. Uh, not right now, but this is again a long standing question, but not right now. It's a more like a set uh, hard coded questions at this point in time, suggestions at this point in time. Uh, yeah, and there's another question. Uh, can we use single sign on feature within a custom website with bots? 50% partially. Yes, I just noticed that. Thanks, uh, Danish. So basically there is an authentication that's available right now. So you could authenticate the user by clicking on a button within the bot itself and provide the username, password, whatever. It's going to automatically authenticate you, but there is a friction of users providing the username and the, uh, and the password. So a single sign on, it is actually coming. 2020, where when the bot is hosted in your hosted application, this website, it automatically understands the context of the website and it, you don't even have to provide the username and password again. It automatically signs you in so that 
the bot knows what who the customer is. It's coming 2020. And yeah, I see a question. Can we host the bot on a HTML page? Absolutely. So there is nothing nothing wrong in hosting that at all. You just have to follow the custom. I showed you that custom. Um, here it is, right? So go to the channels, go to custom website. It doesn't care whether it's an HTML page or anything like that. As long as it hosted, as long as you have customers, just copy, copy this, paste it. You should be good to go. Right, OK, so. Can we use bots with power portals? Yes, any portals, anything. No limitations at all. It's all possible at the end of the day. That's a website. So is there any kind of inbuilt security to prevent a bot to be hacked with too many intentional requests? So I typically find this. The framework should handle this, right? The framework is bad, should be battle tested. At least we are not doing anything specific or inconsistent practices or doing all these things. So the Microsoft framework, the underlying bot framework is to itself will be able to handle that. And yes, you can fool the bot like you. If you want to have the intentional request, you can definitely fool the bot. The point is not to say that, but then yeah, the framework should handle some of these security related practices for sure. Uh, where can I find the best practices? So there are. It's I have not seen the best practices list of best practices in the power virtual agents documentation itself, but I have seen the best practices within the bot framework um, documentation and I have in my blog post. I have written a, I have written a couple of blog posts around this best practices um, completely, so you could take a look at my blog post as well for the best practices. OK, so we don't have the bot integration with the IVR system today, but it is coming 2020. So where the bot will be able to talk like connect to your IVR system and it uses the cognitive services text to speech, speech to text in order to intercept what the customer's intents are and then pass the information back to the agent. It is coming 2020. Hang on. Yes, the bot is under an iframe in the custom website. You're right. Yeah, so the only way to connect the virtual agent WhatsApp is by yeah, that is right. So to Twilio, I've seen people using it, but I have not tried it myself, but I think you are in the right direction. This one. You're welcome. How about permission things? Uh, who, who who can get permissions and uh, how do you set up those permissions or instances or um, you know uh, best practices around um, deploying um, bots? Yeah, so it's it's more like right now you, you it's wide open. That to be very honest. Right now this entire bot power V8 or Microsoft.com. If you go to it, it's all wide open. If your organization is enabled, anybody can go and create a bot and try it out, right? But then things are getting tightened up a bit with the solutions. So in 2020, we should see a feature where we will be able to export the bot, put it in the solution, and then export the bot as part of your solution and put it in the UAT. So at that time, then we can expect the security roles to also be there because now it's all part of the the framework solution itself, right? So then the security roles could come in and all those things. But right now it's more like, you know, like we are seeing a particular bot in the environment and in order to recreate, you have to recreate it in a different environment to be able to stand that up. Did that answer, Danish? Yep, it did. Thanks. Yeah, I think I think I'm I'm just holding my breath for 2022 end right <laughs> because one for Corona and the other one for the the features that we see right now. The feature right. set is just truly amazing. I'm with you. Yeah, I do. Any other questions? Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you could definitely some of the best practices I actually talked about in this uh, presentation. Uh, it is part of that best practices blog that I written about. So I, I feel that anybody who's even trying to learn this power virtual agents for a or any bot in general, right? 
these are some of the basic best practices that we should employ otherwise it just we just keep, can keep creating but nobody's going to use it so it's very 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 important And it can definitely this is more like a 101 at this point in time, but then there is there is a lot more to cover on entities. How can we identify what the customer is talking about in the context of their business objects and so on and skills? There is a lot more to talk about. This is more like I just want to give you a taste of what how to create a bot. Just if you if you find yourself having a free afternoon, you could actually put together a bot. That's the whole idea. That's the whole idea of this session. So can you share a bit more uh, bot customer service for banking? Bit more about a bot customer service. What are some challenges? So it's it's a very broad question, Hank. So it depends on what are your business objectives. That's the number one thing to know. What exactly your customers expect? What exactly you are rolling out the bot for? Are you rolling out the bot for you know transactions like real banking transactions? Or you're rolling out the you're rolling out the bot for some frequently asked questions. It's a, it's a it's a it, we definitely have to understand where exactly your customers are going to be um, uh, expecting a bot, and then and your organization is expecting your bot to be. So it's a it really depends on that. It really depends on your business objectives. Yeah. So FAQ call center that is typically the bot thing, but it can definitely be beyond that for sure. It really depends on your business objectives. Yeah. Can we filter the actions that a user can do in conversation based on the security? Filter the actions um, can do in the conversation based on the security roles. I do not know the answer to that question, Mustafa. I can actually find that out. You can, if you can connect me offline, we can just find it out together. You're talking. I think you're talking more like power automate filtering based on the security. Uh, we can find it out together. That's interesting. Oh, I think so. He's referring to the actions themselves, which shows up in the bot. The, you mean uh, the the power automate actions, right? Mm, right. Yeah, that's exactly what we need to find out. Because what if somebody else is creating the power automate? Will the bot have access to all these power automate, or how are you going to, um, you know, restrict the bots to see the only the actions that you want the bots to see, right? So I do not know the full answer for that. It may be very preliminary if I provide that, so better go through that and answer Mustafa on that. Yeah, great questions, guys. Great questions. Yeah, keep them coming. If you have any other questions, yeah, please reach out offline as well. Like, doesn't have to be in the session. That's fine. All right. Anything else before we? Okay. Security restrictions power argument. OK, so Kunal has an answer for that. Thank you, you're welcome. Any other questions going one, going twice, going thrice? All right, I'll stay. I'll hang on. If you have any other questions, so feel free to drop off and join other sessions. If you don't, then I'll hang on until the end of the session to see if anyone has any questions. And thanks, thanks a lot, Danish, for moderating. Hey, uh, thanks, Zina. It was a great session. Learned a lot as as always. You were great. Thank so, you, thank you.